If you ever build financial reports from exported data, I have a very helpful tutorial from my Masters One course. It shows how to create a balance sheet or a financial statement from a trial balance. Now, if you're not familiar with those accounting terms, it just means I'm creating a summary report from a detail report. And so what this does is it shows how to automate this whole process so that going forward, we can just click refresh. As you know, with just about anything in Excel, there's many ways to accomplish any given task. The method that's shown in this tutorial really uses Power Query, the data model, and formula-based reports. And this is awesome because most people think that if we're using Power Query and we're using Power Pivot or the data model, it means we're forced into using a pivot table. And that's just not true. We're gonna show how to release this report from the constraints of a pivot table and turn it into a formula-based report where you are free to format it as desired. Check it out. Hello and welcome to the bonus lesson. All right, let's see what's going on here. This is an update to a Journal of Accountancy article that I wrote a while ago called Mapping Tables. And, and the article featured a, a technique that used the SUMIFS function along with tables to automate um, you know, taking values from an exported trial balance into a financial statement. Um, and even if you're not building trial balances and financial statements, it was, it was a technique that, you know, has, that applies you know, broadly beyond that. Um, when, when labels you know, in the data source are different from the labels in the report. So this is an update to that, and we're going to use you know, Power Query, Power Pivot, the data model. So before we jump into Excel, let's kind of see what our overall objective is here. We have exported some type of you know, data from some type of system. In this particular case, it happens to be a trial balance. What's that? It's just a list of my accounts along with their current balances, their amounts. Okay, and so that's uh, is what I'm going to use as a starting point to build a report. The report that I have, um, the report I'm trying to build here is called a balance sheet. But the key, you know, fundamental idea here is that the labels are different. So even if you're not working with trial balance and balance sheets, um, maybe you're working with you know vendor ID and and vendor names. Um, but but there's two different labels between the data source and the final report. Okay, that's what this is really trying to, um, to, to, uh, to demonstrate. So in my data source, the labels are really account names, things like cash, money market, savings. My report, on the other hand, uses different labels, things like cash and cash equivalents or prepaids and deposits. When the labels are different, like how do we automate this, you know? Uh, can we use VLOOKUP? Can we use some ifs? No, because the labels are different. They're not going to make a match. So what are we supposed to do? Like do it manually? No. No, all we need to do is insert an intermediate step, a mapping table. And the mapping table provides the translations. And this gives Excel all the information it needs to fully automate this process. Okay. And in fact, we can map many to one. In other words, many accounts can all be mapped to a single financial statement line or report group. Okay. So originally, this article showed how to accomplish this using some ifs and tables. Now we're going to use Power Query and Power Pivot. So let me head over to Excel and I'm going to open up the bonus lesson workbook. Okay, and we have our standard four steps, assess, browse, create, design, plus a little reference. So this is what we are trying to build. All right, this is going to be our report. Um, let's browse and see where we're coming from. All right, we have three data sources. Let's start by checking out the trial balance. Okay, okay so this trial balance is basically a list of accounts, account name, and amount. Okay and these have their own individual account names. These are different from the report labels. These are account names. All right, so let's close that. And let's take a look at our next one, mapping table. Okay, so our mapping table provides the connection or the translation. And it's telling Excel, the, you know, this, these account IDs belong to these report labels. And these are numbers, and, and we'll see how to bring the labels later, but, but this shows the mapping between the account ID and the financial statement line ID. Um, let's look at the FS lines here so we can kind of see, but this is the intermediate kind of step, the mapping table. And now let's open up our FS groups. 
Okay, and this has the FS line ID along with the, the report group, the FS line name, plus some categories. Okay, so that's where we're, uh, where we're coming from. So let's go ahead and close that, and now let's go to create. All right, we're going to use Power Pivot, Power Query. First, let's get the data. I'm going to get the data from a text CSV. First, let's grab the trial balance. It looks clean enough, so we'll load it to the data model. Now let's go get the next one, which is going to be the mapping table. We'll load this to the data model. Now let's get the FS groups. We're going to load that to the data model. Okay, with our data retrieved, let's go ahead and do the power pivot stuff. First, let's build our relationships. Manage data model. Okay, we have the trial balance, that looks good. The mapping table and the FS groups. Okay, so let's go to diagram view. Here we have the trial balance down here, we have the mapping table in the middle and FS groups up here. So let's grab account ID, which is related to account ID, and FS line ID is related to FS line ID. One to many good, one to many good. And while we're here, let's go ahead and do use that sort by feature. So I'm going to go ahead and go to, and I'm going to tell Excel that when it sees this FS line name, really sort it by the FS line ID number. So sort by column, and we want FS line ID, click OK. Okay, I'm going to switch back to here, and let's create our measure. So power pivot measures new measure. And we want to call it total amount. And it is going to be equal to the sum of the trial balance amount column. We're going to apply a whole number format and click OK. OK, let's go to the next one. Let's go ahead and get a pivot table in here. Insert pivot table. Use the workbook's data model, existing worksheet looks good. And now let's go ahead and close this. We want uh, to view it by FS groups category and then FS line name. And then let's grab the total amount. Okay. And now at this point, we have, you know, we have the correct numbers. Like if we look at our, our reference here. We have cash and cash equivalents, 89882, 89882, prepaid 61452, prepaid 61452. But this is built within a pivot table. And a pivot table doesn't really have the, the total flexibility of a formula-based report. I mean, this is, you know, with formulas and cells, we can position any value in any cell and we're not sort of restrained or confined to the, the layout structure of a pivot table. So, ah, I wish we had, you know, the ability to, to, to use the power of, of the pivot table and the data model, but, you know, really have formulas. But guess what? We totally can. Yeah, we totally can. All we need to do is go to Pivot Table Tools Analyze, OLAP Tools, Convert to Formulas, and... <laughs> and we got it. Look at th this. We've broken out of the pivot table. Now we're back into normal formulas. And, and, and these formulas use functions, cube functions. And cube functions pull values from the data model. Look at this workbook data model. And now that these are formulas, guess what? Yeah, we, we, we are free to, to format this however we want. Let's go ahead and just, uh, you know, cut this. Uh, we'll paste it here. We'll insert a row here. We need like total assets here. Let's just use a sum function for now to get that going. All right. And maybe total liabilities, right? And maybe this is going to be total equity. And maybe this is going to be total You know, and now maybe we use a, a sum function here. We grab this stuff. 
let's just use a sum function here, grab this. Uh, maybe this is basically equal to this plus this, you know, or we could use subtotal function, whatever. But, but the point is now, now we have control, you know, and maybe we put some bottom cell borders here, here, and here. Uh, maybe we indent this, you know, maybe we indent this. Uh, maybe we grab this whole thing, do a, a format of, you know, comma. Maybe we widen this up. Uh, maybe this is all caps. Um, and you can kind of take it from there. Um, now let's take, take away this. And watch what happens when we take away this. We delete this and we get a bunch of errors. So let me undo and let's kind of see what's going on here. This cube value function is referencing C15. In fact, they all are. So if we delete this, it's going to mess up these formulas. So what are we supposed to do? Have to leave this in here? No, no. All we need to do is update the formula. And this is how we can reference the data model directly. We just type in a quote. And then we select, you know, you know, from the table that we want, or this is measures, tab to autocomplete, and then we use a dot. Uh, it'll list out the items. We hit tab to autocomplete, close the quote, close the function, enter. And now I can just copy and paste, paste and paste, and now I can delete this. We got it. I need to put these bottom cell borders back in here. Now we got it. Good. So the point of this exercise is simply that we can also reference the data model values from formulas using the cube functions within Excel. OK, pretty cool. All right, excellent. Uh, let's go back to uh, here and, and have our recap. In Power Query, we retrieved data from a bunch of CSV files. We didn't have any transformations. It came in pretty clean. We loaded it to the data model. Uh, and then in Power Pivot, we, we created some relationships. Uh, we used the sort by. And for the report, uh, we started with a pivot table. And then we used the OLAP tools to convert the pivot table into formulas. And those formulas used cube functions to retrieve values directly from the data model. Thanks so much. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 